Hello, everyone, and welcome to Unit 14. Now I get it. Discuss the meaning of gestures, body language, uh, rules, and recognize common signs. So let's go ahead and start with the snapshot. Let me go ahead and zoom in. So popular emojis, we have the straight face, I'm not amused, I'm laughing so hard that I'm crying, I'm so bored, great job, that's amazing, I'm so embarrassed, uh, I love it, that's awful, just kidding, and my heart is breaking. What I find amusing about this, uh, last semester I was <laughs> talking to that particular group, and they're like, yeah, we don't really use emojis anymore. Now it's all about like gifts and stuff. So a uh, little outdated, but I know that sometimes we still use them as reactions and stuff like that, right? Um, but yeah, it's definitely uh, old school at this point. Like my dad uses them a lot. Uh, my mom used to warn uh, yesterday for the first time, <laughs> unprompted, in context, it was hilarious. I was like, oh, look at you. <laughs> she was like, right? It's my first one. And she got it. She got it down pat. So uh, it was pretty funny. It was a good moment. Now, considering that she's 79, like <laughs> she's very late to the party. Uh, do you use these emojis? Uh, yeah. You know, um, and then this one is a reaction. I love it. Or that's awful. <clears throat> the older you get, the more bad news you get. <laughs> so I've used this one uh, just like within the last two weeks I've got uh, some pretty horrendous news from friends and family so that one uh, this one not so much but the rest they're like whatever All right. what other expressions can you use emojis um, to convey oh well uh, we know we have the the high five one that people use for like thoughts and prayers, right? Like they misunderstood it. So there's always that one. Uh, there's the guy shrugging his shoulders with like, you know, well, hey, it's whatever, which we're actually going to look at uh, later on in the unit. Not the emoji itself, but that expression where just like shrugging your, uh, shrugging your shoulders of like, well, I don't know, right? Or, you know, it's up to you. What is the weirdest emoji you've ever seen? Um, none of, like, like all the animal faces ones, like I just don't get it, <laughs> right? Um, the funniest, none are really funny. Gifts on the other hand can be really funny because you can clip them, right? And the stickers too. Uh, the hardest to understand, well, some of the face ones, you know, are not a hundred percent what you want to convey. They just get close. Um, and like I said, the one with the two high fives, that's the one that gets misinterpreted the most. But for our vocabulary this unit, we have quite a few things here. So it's kind of a two part. We have a few phrases, and we have some words down here, some emotions that go with these particular behaviors. We have some pictures here, not the greatest of drawings, uh, which is why we can have more than one answer when it comes to the second part of the exercise. For example, she's scratching her head, right? So it's obviously F. She's biting her nails. I'm trying to see biting her nails. She's rolling her eyes. All right. This is a really hard one to convey like in a picture or a drawing, all right? But it's obviously D right here. You know, normally it's like an exasperation. She's tapping her foot. She's pulling her hair out. She's wrinkling her nose, all right? Oh, oh my God, all right? So, Use the pictures in part A and these adjectives to describe how the woman is feeling. Right. 
So in which ones does she look annoyed? So again, we can have more than one, right? Sometimes people wrinkle their nose because they're so annoyed, right? Um, if they get really annoyed, they can pull their hair out. So you can say, I'm really annoyed or here like I'm frustrated or irritated, right? Same thing with the rolling of the eyes. Like think about when you roll your eyes at somebody and you're like, oh, oh my God, right? You can be bored, you can be annoyed, right? You can be frustrated. Like you've explained something and they still don't get it. You just roll your eyes and you're like, oh my God, you just don't get it, right? The most common emotion for wrinkling your nose is obviously disgusted. Like, oh, I'm so disgusted. Like, because whether it's something, right? for example, like with food, something can smell really bad. So you automatically wrinkle your nose and go, oh, that smells horrible. But you have the same reaction just by looking at something that looks horrible and you wrinkle your nose or at a situation that causes you disgust and you just wrinkle your nose, right? Uh, exhausted? Um, I don't see anyone that might actually be like, oh, I'm really tired or I'm exhausted or whatever. It's not really one of those. Um, when people tap their feet, you know, it can be out of being impatient, frustration, irritation, annoyance, right? Uh, people normally bite their nails when they're nervous, for example. So, for example, sometimes when I get nervous, I tap my foot. You know, there are some people that are just like really high energy and they just tap their feet. And it's not so much that they're annoyed or impatient. It's just that they're a little nervous. Right. So again, we can have more than one for this one. Right. It's just putting a few sentences together. In the first picture, she's tapping her foot. She looks impatient. Right. Moving on. Conversation, it's pretty confusing. But Ava, how was dinner with the new Bulgarian student last night? What's her name, Elena? Yeah, Elena. It was nice. We always have a good time, but I still don't understand her very well. You see, when we offer her something to eat or drink, she nods her head up and down, but at the same time, she says no. It might mean she wants to accept it, but she thinks it's not polite. In some countries, you have to refuse any offer first, then the host insists and you accept it. I don't know. It's pretty confusing. It could mean she doesn't want anything, but she thinks it's rude to say no. Actually, in some countries, when people move their heads up and down, it means no. Really? Now I get it. Right. Now, I haven't bumped into this, but... I'm not saying it's not the case. I just know that all countries have like head movements, right? Uh, Gabriel Iglesias, AKA Fluffy, a stand-up comedian, he talked about his experience in India and how they move their heads versus how uh, Mexicans move their heads, right? So I'll go ahead and link that one in the description below so you guys can take a look at it. Uh, it's pretty amusing. So, in the conversation, we had some modals and adverbs of certainty. And what I mean by this is like when you say something might or may mean she wants to accept something is like you're not very sure. It could be 50-50. Same thing with like it could mean she doesn't want anything, right? So, like you're guessing. You're not really sure. That must mean no. You're like 99.9% .9 sure because you're never going to be 100%. Yeah. Okay? So as close as you can get is that must mean no, 99.9, .9, right? Then with the adverbs, you have maybe, which in Spanish is a lo mejor, and perhaps, which is quizás, right? 
So maybe, or perhaps it means she wants to accept it. Right, again, you're not 100% sure. It probably means she doesn't want anything. And then that definitely means no. Right. So with must, you're still like 99.9%. .9%. When something is definite, it's 100%. It's really, really hard to do that. Right? To be 100% sure. It's very rare. So here, what do these gestures mean? So for example, in number one, right, it could mean I can't hear you. Here's the one that I was talking about, the, the shrugging. There's an emoji with a guy doing exactly this, right? So number two, um, maybe it means I don't know, right? Number three definitely means be quiet. And it's fairly universal, right? Number four is pretty amusing because uh, I want to say it may be, <laughs> it may mean uh, come here, right? But it also looks like it, it actually means, you know, come at me, bro. <laughs> he's he's turning you into a fight. It reminds me of this movie from the 80s that it's incredibly cheesy. It's actually uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme's first movie and he plays a villain. He plays a Russian. Uh, and they make such a point of it, too. Uh, in the very last fight, um, the the kid, our, our hero, faces off with him. And, and he does this gesture. You know, the, come here. Right? The, come at me. Uh, I'll go ahead and link that scene as well. Uh, I'll link the whole thing. It's like five minutes, but it's like within, it's like a minute in. Right? And he, he goes and is like, yeah, this time it'll be different. Russian. Right? And it's like, yeah, like. Cold War era movies and media is just amazingly cheesy because of that kind of stuff. Like the, the emotions were high. And you're like, yeah, beat the Russian, blah, right? So I'll go ahead and, and uh, link that one as well. Uh, number five, um, it must mean call me. And number six, I think it's also a, a pretty universal. Uh, you can tell me if that's the case or not, but I, I, in most cultures I've encountered, um, it probably means that sounds crazy. Like that sounds crazy, that's crazy, you're crazy, <laughs> they're crazy, right? Because they, they also usually like, do a little circular motion, right? So it might mean, it probably means, it could be, yada, yada. We're not 100% sure. So it could mean different things in different countries and courts. So modals and adverbs of certain. Uh, the next section, uh, the speaking is really interesting. I uh, I like doing this one in class, obviously. Um, there are some activities where I'm not a fan of and I usually skip. Um, but ones that are really engaging, especially ones that ask like pretty personal questions, I tend to like because you guys have to dig deep or it's actually very easy for you because it's something that you can relate to. So. In group work, imagine you have one of these problems. What could explain it? All right. So I'm always late for class. I'm always exhausted at the end of the day. I'm often irritated with everybody at the office. I'm often bored. I'm always broke. I often argue with my friends. All right. So what could explain it? Uh, so if you're arguing uh, with just people in general, especially people close to you, uh, you're just probably tired. At least that's my case. I get very argumentative if I'm tired because I get easily annoyed, right? So when it says here, I'm often irritated with everybody at the office, it's like, are you sleeping well or are you surrounded by idiots? Because that could be the case too, 
Or maybe you just don't vibe with the people uh, during your shift. That happens too. Uh, one of my coworkers, uh, she, we have in-person in uh, in-person classes, and then we have the virtual classes. And she switched days, right? Um, because the coworkers that uh, she was having in-person classes with and they would share the, the teacher's lounge, uh, she just wasn't clicking with, right? So nothing wrong with them. It's just the personalities weren't matching. So she switched days, right? And she feels a lot better because uh, the, the people that she's with now, uh, similar senses of humor and things like that, right? And, and uh, much more compatible personality. So that could be it too. It's just you you don't vibe with a particular person. You don't really click, but it doesn't mean that they're horrible individuals. It's just like, well, you know, not everybody's going to like you and vice versa. I'm always broke. All right. So uh, I can relate to this one because um, when I was younger, I always bought CDs, right? I have a, a, a decent CD collection. It's very small compared to some of the ones I've seen from collectors as of late. But it's uh, bigger than the average person's. I have over 350 CDs. And that's after losing quite a few in several moves. So um, I used to buy CDs. And now it's video games. <laughs> Whenever something is on sale, I was like, I, I got I to gotta take an, uh, advantage of this because it's usually not there. So I'm always broke. Well, because I'm always buying video games. Right. But it could be anything else, right? Like uh, I always go out on weekends, right? Uh, going out is very expensive, um, especially uh, if you're going to be safe and not take your car because you shouldn't be drinking and driving. So uh, you take a taxi or you take an Uber there and back. You know, that's expensive. Uh, drinks are, are always marked up. It's always cheaper to go to a supermarket or convenience store, get yourself your own drinks and go home. It's always cheaper to buy groceries and cook at home than buying stuff at the club or places or just eating out all the time at restaurants. So yeah, going out tends to be expensive. So if one minimizes that, that usually is good for a budget, right? I'm often bored. That usually means like you're not being challenged, right? Especially, especially in class, right? Well, it could also be like you're just not sleeping very well, right? So I'm always exhausted at the end of the day. Why? Could be that you're out of shape. Could be you're not drinking enough water. Could be you're not doing enough exercise, right? It could be you're not getting enough sleep. So take care of yourself, guys. <laughs> Eat well, exercise, and uh, sleep in particular is key. Uh no less than seven hours, no less than seven hours, anything less than that, uh, you're not doing yourself any favors. So from seven hours and up, make sure you're getting that kind of sleep. I know it's hard, especially when you're in school. Um, so you have a lot of homework and projects, but try and get as much sleep as you can. Perspectives. What do you think these signs mean? Listen and match each sign with the correct meaning. Right. Uh, so I'm assuming, so here's a shoe with the circle and the line across. That is very much universal for not allowed. And the blue circle, the blue open circle uh, for either allowed or to do it. So for example, number six, they're not telling you you're allowed to use your seatbelt. They're telling you, put it on. <laughs> when this light is on, it means put on your seatbelt, right? So, for example, A says, you can swim here. Obviously, it's this one, right? You're not allowed to take photos. That happens in a lot of museums. So there's the camera with the line across. You have to fasten your seatbelt, right? You have to. So there it is. This one is allowing you to swim. You, know, you can swim here. And this one is like, no, you have to put your seatbelts on. This is very common on airplanes. 
I don't know why it's not on buses. No, <laughs> you'd think uh, that'd be the case, but it's not. But on airplanes, it's definitely the case. Uh, you've got to take off your shoes to enter. I'm assuming this is very common in a lot of Asian countries. Does that and the West, it's definitely not a thing, right? Having to take your shoes off to enter a specific place. Um, well, I remember when I was a kid and I'd go to McDonald's and like in the play area, you were told to take off your shoes and you had to wear socks, right? So yeah, but outside of that, like those uh, the uh, the play pens in McDonald's, which are not very common anymore because of parents complaining that McDonald's purposely targets children and that's why they get hooked on junk food and get fat. So I believe a lot of McDonald's no longer have those areas, but the few that do, yeah, you can't enter without your shoes. You're allowed to park here. You can't turn left. Pets aren't allowed in this area. You have to turn off electronic devices in this area. Now, these signs are very effective because uh, a student of mine, an ex-student of mine, he tagged me on this picture, right? It's in fact, the first comment right here, a good one that you can use in your class and it's exactly what I'm doing right now, right? <laughs> one day English will kill us. It says crocodiles do not swim here. Now I saw another meme that said this, uh, this sign has three meanings, right? One of them is addressing the crocodiles. It's, hey, crocodiles, do not swim here. But crocodiles can't read. So it only actually has two meanings. Crocodiles, comma, do not swim here. Okay. There's crocodiles, so do not swim here. Right. And the other one is crocodiles do not swim here. There are no crocodiles. Right. So the first one is a little nonsensical because crocodiles can't read, but it's telling the crocodiles not to swim there. The second one is telling us not to swim there because there are crocodiles. And the third one is stating that there are no crocodiles swimming there. Right? So it's very, very important to know your punctuation in your sentence structure because it can be very, very confusing. Right? There it is. Do not. You're not allowed. You're not allowed, right? So pets are not allowed in this area. You are not allowed to swim here because there's crocodiles. I'd rather play it safe than sorry. Right. So that's going to be our second grammar focus. There we go. We're going back to the modals. So the first modals that we looked at in adverbs were of certainty. These modals are of permission, obligation, and prohibition, what you are not allowed to do. So for example, permission, you can swim here. You are allowed to park here. Obligation, you have to fasten your seatbelt. There's no other option. You have to, right? Uh, and then you have the more British, you have got to, you've got to, right? Have to and you have got to, they mean the same thing. Again, it's just really British English versus American English, right? But uh, you will hear this in the US, but not as often as like, you just, you have to, right? So, You've got to take off your shoes. And then prohibition, you can't turn left. Pets aren't allowed in this area. Don't swim here. Okay, prohibition. Then in pairs, we're gonna use the language in the grammar box to talk about these signs, right? So for example, in the first one, right? Uh, normally, this one has a signage that says, in case of fire, take the stairs, right? 
So it says you have to, or you've got to use the stairs in case of fire. You can't use the elevators, right? So come up with as many as you can. Notice that they had a had a few. But uh, if you go to a hotel or um, any big place that has more than one story, more than one floor, you will see this sign that'll tell you in case of fire, use the stairs, right? Uh, number two, I'm going to assume it says uh, music is not allowed. They do have the headphones, so I don't know if it's just like no headphones. But usually if you can't use your headphones and you just can't play music altogether. Yeah, there you go. You can't listen to music or you're not allowed to listen to music in the class. All right. So you can't hear music. Can't listen to music. All right. Please throw away the trash or you have to throw the trash, right? You have to, you've got to, okay? Putting your phone on vibrate, food and drink. I see this one a lot on the light rail, on the tren ligero. And in fact, um, a nice lady comes over to the speakers and tells you, uh, you know, remember food and drink is not allowed on the train, right? Uh, bicycle parking only. Uh, a video camera. These are slowly coming out of fashion, though I have to say because of content creation, they are coming back. I know a lot of uh, content creators and TikTokers and whatever just use their phones. But those that take content creation uh, seriously uh, actually go out and get camcorders, actual cameras to record. Uh, for all sorts of reasons. Um, it's just much more comfortable and um, the quality is a little better than what your camera phone can can do, right? So it just, it depends on what you're going for, right? For example, since I'm just giving you the lesson, there's no need for me to ever show my face. So I haven't really invested in a camera, but what I do want to eventually invest in is a microphone a better microphone. So we'll see about that. And photo ID required. So again, depending on the signage, you can, you're allowed, you have to, you've got to, you can't, or you're not allowed. To. Right? And come up with as many as you can using these phrases, whether it's, it has to be done, it's allowed to be done, or you can't. Right. And then uh, what are some of the rules in your office or school? So uh, in some classrooms that you can find this sign as well. It should be in all classrooms, but some have, let's be honest, some have fallen off, right? Just like in the light rail, right? So for example, at my university, we can't eat at our, you know, in our classrooms. It's official policy. Because that's how you get ants and cockroaches, right? And we, we do not want that, <laughs> like at all, right? So we'll go ahead and do that in class as well. Moving on. So our discussion here is going to be to be uh, played by the rules. How many rules can you think of for each of these places? So at the gym, at a public swimming pool, on an airplane, in a museum, in a movie theater, and at work, right? So uh, at the gym, I know that a very basic rule is whatever equipment you use, if like you're using a, a bench, right? Uh, to clean it afterwards. So if you're using a, a bike uh, or the bench press or anything that your sweat is gonna fall on, they ask you to please wipe it when you're done. Right. And in some gyms, uh, the, the gym that I used to go to in the US, they also had like little bottles of disinfectant that you could just like spray it really quickly and then just like uh, wipe the equipment clean. Right. At a public swimming pool, um, for no running. You are you are not allowed to run. Right. On an airplane, uh, you are not allowed to smoke anymore. It's not the 80s. <laughs> 
and in some countries even the 90s. Uh, I remember getting on, a, on an airplane uh, here in Mexico in the early thousands and the uh, um, the stewardess allowed a guy to smoke as long as he did it at the back of the airplane. And I'm like, you know, smoke like will fill the cabin. But they were like, yeah, it's fine. As long as you do it in the back and you're not bothering anybody. <laughs> it's like, okay. Uh, like international laws and regulations regarding flying has prohibited smoking on airplanes like forever. And oh well. So that was an interesting experience to see. Uh, in a museum, I'm going to steal the one from the previous exercise, and you are not allowed to take pictures, right? That's a very common one. Uh, in a movie theater, while not a written rule, um, you are not allowed to talk, right? That's why you always get that shh, shh, right? When people are talking, shut up. You're ruining the movie. <laughs> you are not allowed to talk. And at work, uh, you're not allowed to play games at work. Right? Uh, you're not allowed to see Netflix at work. So depending on uh, where you work and if you have to use a computer for work, uh, a lot of stuff is blocked. Right? Like I remember uh, when I was working at the Language Institute, sometimes I would um, use my Netflix account to show the students uh, a series or an episode or whatever. And then they blocked it. Because <laughs> I guess uh, some teachers were using it to uh, as a substitute for classes. I would use it as supplemental material, but I guess they caught some teachers just like showing movies, just the whole thing, right? Just to kill time. So they blocked it, right? So what other rules of things that you are allowed and not allowed to do in these situations and places, right? So we're gonna share our ideas. Why do you think these rules exist? Um, mostly for safety uh, and hygiene when it comes to the gym and the pool. But uh, a lot of them are also, uh, for example, like no Netflix at work, right? My my dad uh, told me once, and it, it kind of stuck. If you see a sign, right, that means some idiot did it, right? What should be common sense, right? If you see a sign and you're like, who the who would do that? Well, some idiot did, and now they have to put a sign up to tell people like that is not something that you're allowed to do, right? So why do you think these rules exist? Well, some idiot probably did it, right? So it's, uh, it, it's either one of those or just safety and hygiene. But they're not talking in theater. I believe it's just more common courtesy and respect and because you're there to watch a movie. Right, you're not you're not at a party, right? So it's just basic etiquette, basic movie theater etiquette. The listening. Yeah, again, remember the listenings are linked below. In this particular uh, video description, where I'm going to have the audios and then the two clips that I mentioned regarding um, Gabriel Iglesias' take on head movement and uh, no retreat, no surrenders, the, the come here motion, right? Which is, I, oh man, I was watching it uh, as I was preparing for, for this video and <laughs> I got nostalgic and cringy all at once. Like, oh my God, I used to love this movie as a kid and now I watch it and like the sound effects are ridiculous. The choreography is horrendous compared to uh, modern movies, how choreography has improved dramatically. So there it is. All of those will be in the video description below, along with the audios. All right, so listening for road signs. 
Listen to four conversations about driving. Number the situations they are discussing in the correct order from one to four. So these are not in order. You will put them in order. Cars can't be in the bus and taxi lane. Drivers must drive within the speed limit. Drivers have to turn on car headlights on mountain roads. Cars are allowed to park in this area after 6 p.m. Then listen again. How did they find out about the traffic situation? Write what happened. All right. So we have one, two, three, four situations on how they found out about the traffic situation. We just go ahead and fill it. Then in pairs, how do you move around your city? Give two examples of traffic laws you must obey. Okay. So for example, uh, now that I sold my car, I no longer move around in car, I move around uh, using the public transit, the bus and the light rail. I avoid taxis and Ubers because they're expensive. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's, how, how, that's how the cookie crumbles when you're broke because you're buying video games. Writing, golden rules. So as a group, we're gonna discuss the rules that currently exist at our, uh, our school. How many can you think of? Are they all good rules? And I'll tell you right now, no, no, they're not. But again, they're there for a reason, even if that reason is not very logical. And then in groups, uh, think of four new rules that you feel would be a good idea. Work together or write brief explanations of why each is necessary. Yeah. So this is something that student government does every semester. They come in and they let you know the stuff that they've been working on and what are they doing. So one of the rules that they were working on, um, for whatever reason, the university closed access to one of the gates. And now students have to walk a, a little longer to reach the other main gate to enter the campus. And they're saying like, that's a safety issue, especially if you have late classes from 6 p.m. to later, the, the, the campus closes at 10, right? So because of that, they're like, it's a safety concern. We have to be able to have access to that gate, right? So they wanted, to push for a rule that that gate should be allowed to be open. There's no reason for it to be closed anymore. I think they closed it because of the construction during the pandemic, uh, new bike lanes and expanding the freeway and things like that. But now that the construction is done, the gate is still closed and they're moving to reopen it. That way they don't have to circle the entire campus. Right. So as a class, we're going to share these lists and vote on the best new rules, right? And finally, the reading, understanding idioms. This is something that is complicated for anybody learning the language, right? So in English, they say, no, they often make absolutely no sense. As an example, imagine your friend, Sam, tells you his math exam was a piece of cake, right? Do you imagine him at school sitting in front of a sweet dessert with nothing but a pen to eat, uh, to eat it with? In fact, he's saying that the exam was really easy. It's important to learn useful English idioms and knowing their origins it helps us to remember them. Here are stories of three English idioms, right? So there are sometimes there is a one-to-one -one equivalent in Spanish and sometimes there's not. For example, in Spanish, we have, uh, te vas a quedar como el perro de las dos tortas, right? Try explaining that to someone who doesn't speak Spanish, right? And for example, here, number one, I can tell you right now without even looking at the reading here, uh, the, the straw that broke the camel's back. In Spanish, we have la gota que derramó el vaso. But they mean the exact same thing when a situation finally uh, gets to an uncontrollable situation, right? And, and overflows. 
So in English, it's like, that's the straw that broke the camel's back, right? You just couldn't take it anymore. And in Spanish, like that was the drop that finally made the glass overflow, right? Something seemingly so small that makes the situation just blow up, right? So think about it like you're, you're having a bad day, right? And all these little things start happening to you, right? Um, well, you try and catch the bus, it's driving off, you run and you trip and you hurt yourself. And now you have to wait for the next one. So not only did you not catch the bus, now you're hurt, right? Uh, you're late to school and so the professor has already closed the door and locked it and you can't come in. Right, so you missed your first class altogether. Uh, then uh, you realize you forgot your lunch and you don't have any money for it, you know, to buy something. So now you're hungry, you're hurt, you're tired, right? And when you get home, right, your uh, brother, your sister, your siblings, they they do something and you just blow up and they look at you like, dude, what the hell happened? Like it's not that big of a deal for whatever happened. Right, uh, your little brother took your your favorite pants. He's like, dude, it's just a pair of jeans. But to you, it's the straw that broke the camel's back. La gota que derramó el vas. We also say, te llenaron el buche de piedritas. Right. The second one is uh, ring a bell, and the third one is to be under the web. Okay. So let me go ahead and bring them up. You can actually. See the readings right there, along with the numbers. Okay. So we have A, B, and C. One, two, three. All right. The straw that broke the camel's back rings a bell, and feeling under the weather. But remember, before you do the readings. Here are the questions. That are going to go along with it. I mean, you can basically read these first and then number the pictures or vice versa. Number the paragraphs with the pictures. Then it says, um, correct the false statements below. You can guess the meaning of an idiom if you understand each word. In the past, people knew about important events when they heard shouting. A camel falls down if it has to carry too much water. Sailors used to feel sicker when they went to the bottom of the ship. And then in part C, complete the sentences with the correct form of one of the idioms. Julie has a bad cold at the moment and she's doing what? I don't remember his face, but his name does what? And finally, number three, when the neighbor's noisy kids broke my window with their ball, it was what? All right. What idioms are commonly used in your country? Where do you think they come from? All right. Uh, one of my favorite is me cayó el veinte. Right in English, it said uh, we say uh, it finally clicked, right? And me cayó el veinte comes from the old, and I mean really old, like nineteen thirties, nineteen forties payphones that used to work with twenty cent coins, right? And Mexico, being Mexico, sometimes you put the coin in, and it wouldn't it wouldn't catch, right? So. When you put the coin in and the phone finally catches the coin and it allows you to make the call, it says, le cayó el vein, right? So like it, it's functioning now. So whenever you go like, what? oh, I get it now, right? It finally clicks, le cayó el vein, right? That's one of my favorite ones that I actually know where it comes from, right? From the old, old, early 20th century payphones that used to use 20 cent coins, right? So which ones do you guys know of from your countries, right? Or regions? Because that's another thing, like um, different cities and states and, and just regions altogether, the North and South, East and West have different expressions 
to uh, an idioms to say things. But that is it for this one. You guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next unit.